What's up guys, my name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. In this video we will be discovering the legend of Souljun's Sinkhole. It's a decent sized dungeon with an enchanted weapon, boss chest and over 25 moonstone ore veins which you need for crafting elven armor. In fact, I think it's one of the best locations in the game to mine it. And it's also got a little story attached to it as well. So let's go and discover what that is. So let's take a look on our map. We've got the main city of Markov just here. And then Skyhaven Temple, which you get to in the main quest line is here. And if you keep going right, you'll find Souljun's Sinkhole. And there's a boss chest in this location, as I mentioned before, but there's also one in this location and there's like a little way you can get to that boss chest really, really easily. And I'll show you how to do that after this video. So let's go ahead and discover this location and see what's going on here. Another rainy day in the reach. Whoa well there. I don't know where you're going, but stay out of that mine. It isn't safe. The mine isn't safe? Why? We tunneled into an old Nordic crypt. The whole place is crawling with Draugr. We're not mining up any ore with those undead around, so I wouldn't go down there if I were you. Fair enough. Your skin's as pale as the snow. We're keeping the mine closed until that crypt is clear. I hear talk about a regiment coming to clear the crypt out. We'll see if that happens. There's still plenty of ore left in that mine. What a waste. So let's go in and help him out by clearing the mine. He will of course reward us. So here we are inside the mine now. And you're going to want to take care because if you go left as soon as you enter, you'll see some Draga just roaming about minding their own business. I'm about to interrupt their business right now. Oh, get wrecked. There are quite a few and they can very easily overwhelm you. So you do want to try and get as many sneak attacks off as possible. Or at least I do before they discover me. It's just round the corner here. Come out, Mister. Here he is. Take him out before he can see me. And this other guy. Shot him in the leg there. Should be able to fit. Oh fuck's sake! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> He literally just wrecked me. It's the worst thing when, when they... Oh my god, what happened to my bow? What the, that was so strange. It didn't even have an arrow. It was just fully drawn. Yeah, it's the worst thing when they use a shout on you and you're surrounded by death lords because they obviously all just overpower you and you get wrecked and you can't defend yourself or run away when you're on the floor. So let's loot these corpses. Here is our first moonstone ore vein. I'm not going to show you all of them, I'm just going to, you know, point out a few as we go past them, but I know for sure there are over 25 that I counted. There's also some pretty good loot in this dungeon as well. Ebony bow, don't need that. Take your arrows though. And we've got a book here, I think this is a skill book, I'm not so sure which one. And there's also a pickaxe and some ore. Make sure you grab one of these pickaxes, obviously. There are quite a few lying around, but I just quickly want to show you something because a lot of people seem not to know this. So if I get out this pickaxe... Now, we have two choices when it comes to mining. You can either press A and you can go into the mining anima animation, and that takes a really long time, so I'm going to cancel that. What you can do instead is you can just get your weapon out and you can just hit the rock and it will start adding the moonstone ore. So this also counts as mining, and that is so much faster as a way of mining compared to um, doing it the animation way. Though the animation way, I guess, looks cool for role-playing, and I'm glad they had that in the game, but um, you don't need to do that. So up here, up this area here, we have the sinkhole which I am definitely going to be using for the thumbnail of this video because it just looks sick. That overhead view right there. And it looks like one of the miners must have died when the sinkhole collapsed it. That was his lantern, I'm guessing, and he just fell down and died. I don't know if he fell from the fall or there's something else down here. Oh shit, there is something else down here. 
Hello, bro. Take out that guy. Oh my god, what was that? I just took damage or something, but it was like hardly any damage. Maybe it was the candle. Oh god. Take out this guy quickly. Oh, he's got paralyzed. We're fine. Just pelt him with arrows. I mentioned before, um, okay, let's see who this, this was a Breton. Uh, he doesn't even look like a miner, does he? He looks like a merchant or something. That's somehow fallen down here. These greedy miners discovering Nordic crypts and things like that. The thing about um, Nordic crypts is the Draga are, are bred to, well, they're, they're kind of like the dead and they're meant to defend the crypt from intruders. So you'll hear them, like, if they can see you at least. You'll get some dialogue out of them, and the things that they say are kind of like, leave now. Oh god, hi. <laughs> this guy might say something, but it's that you can actually translate it into English. And um, what they say is kind of like, leave now, you're not welcome here, get out, sort of thing. And they are effectively just defending the crypt from your, your disturbance. When you're not here, there's actually a book in Skyrim that explains what they do when you're not in the dungeon. As you can see, there's lots of arrow slits here. And then there's just this massive lever in the middle with all these candles surrounding it. Do not pull this lever. Instead, we've got to pull this one. The gate won't open. So you pull the other one as well. And then it should open. There we go. But if you pull this one in the middle, you'll get pelted with arrows that are poisonous from either side. And that just absolutely wrecks you at a low level. If the arrows don't kill you, the poison definitely will. There's also a pressure plate here, so that activates spike traps, so don't step on that pressure plate. There's quite a few enemies in this room here, so do take care. I'm gonna try and take them out as they all run over here rather stupidly. But yeah, I was talking about what the Draga do while you're not adventuring or exploring the dungeon. They apparently, um, according to this book I was reading, they just go about cleaning the whole place and worshipping the dragon priest. They all like go and worship the... Oh, that's weird. It's almost like a miniature trap stone. But yeah, they go and worship the dragon priest and like bow down and pray to him. Because um, that's obviously... Oh, giant snow, that's good. And frost salts. There's lots of rare ingredients here actually, it's really useful. And there's actually a pool here that goes underwater. Whoa, okay. Probably a chest down here. Yeah, here we go, there's a chest. So, nine gold and a ruby. Not fantastic loot. And we can't get out that side. Uh, I'm gonna have, guess we have to come back the way we came, which is here. <laughs> Almost out of breath there, that was close. There's actually a book here called Watchers of Stones and Spirit of Nern. So that's about how the world was created. This one's about the standing stones, I think. Um, refined Moonstone, if you want that for crafting. And I'm looking for a certain book that I know is here. Ah, Corb and the Dragon. Now, you have to read this book, guys. This book is basically a choose-your-own-adventure book. So, like... You, you read like each paragraph and then it says turn to page two and then there might be a choice so it's like you want to climb down or visit the tavern and then you turn to whatever page that is on and then you go through the whole book making like choices and decisions. I actually tried to do a whole let's play series based on you know people having their own choices so you could click the annotation depending on what you wanted to do. I'll leave a link to that that thing in, in the description. It was okay like it worked quite well but um you can be the judge of how well you think it worked. So obviously there's a path going this way, but if you look at this entrance again, you'll notice that there's a darker path that goes around the corner here. And that leads you to a secret treasure room just here. So make sure you grab this chest. And there's actually an enchanted weapon here. It's not the enchanted weapon of the dungeon, but there is one there. So let's carry on through this corridor here get back into sneak mode because there is an enemy targeted over there. 
I'm guessing that is the boss of this dungeon. Oh, bloody hell, I fucking forgot about that pillar. There's this stupid ass pillar, whether you're sneaking or not, you can see it there, it charges up and just fires a fireball at you, and it will hit you whether you're sneaking or not. So try and activate it, and then move out of the way and get a sneak attack on the overlord. And he's gonna try and heal himself up. But you can dodge it if you move from left to right. Oh god, don't hit me please. So we can finish this guy off. Oh, that was a beautiful kill cam there. He's a little bit paralysed. <laughs> so we've completed the quest of clear clearing out all the drag. Sorry that was my phone if you heard that. Um, what's this? Oh, that's the ice spell he casted. So there's a tap root, there's a ruby, some more rare ingredients here that we can use to craft poisons, and an ancient Nordic war axe. Now sometimes you'll come down here and there'll be a dragon priest as an enemy. And obviously we've got a boss chest here. Staff of Mending. Not fantastic. But okay nonetheless. And we've got some more Moonstone Ore Veins. Okay, so if we carry on up here, I will show you where we can find the enchanted weapon. It's not really hidden. It's just here. And you can walk past it. But Orcish Sword of Devouring. And it will always be a randomly enchanted weapon. It's sometimes an Orcish Sword, sometimes not. Sometimes it's something else. But... You can get it and disenchant it and put it on whatever weapon you want, to be honest. So let's carry on out of this dungeon now. So that's where we first entered, and it leads us back into this room now. And now we can go out and tell the miner who owns the mine what we've done, that we've cleared it out and he can pay us some gold. We're keeping the mine closed until that crypt is clear. And then after I'll show you where to find the boss chest. So I cleared out the mine of Draga. You did? We were waiting for the Jarl to send an entire regiment to clear that mine. Now we can get back to work. Thank you. So he's given us 1,500 gold. I think if you're a low level it's about 500 or 250 gold. But um, obviously the higher level you are the more gold you get. So I have some Moonstone ore to sell which you can sell to him. And he gives you... I think it's... 5 for 150, so he doesn't give you very much gold, it's like 25 gold per ore stone. You're better off just smelting it all and making it into crazy. elven armor, and then selling the elven armor. Draugr down there. Divines bless you. May the ground you walk quake as you pass. Thank you. So this is the other miner here, and you can actually talk to him before you do the quest, and he'll give you a bit of a dialogue explaining how he doesn't yet. want to go into the mine because people have it. died and all this kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that, you can go and talk to him, and I'll let you discover that yourself. But if we go from this house over here, there's like a clearing in the rocks, and this is actually kind of like a massive shortcut to get to this boss chest down here. And you can see there's a hag raven doing some kind of weird sacral religious thing down there, so we can take her out. She gets killed in one shot because she's a weak bitch. We should be able to kill her pretty easily. And she's the only enemy here, and now you can just go to town looting the place. So there's a giant with giant's toe, which we need for crafting some powerful alchemy potions. And there's also another giant's toe here, and some void salts, which is also an expensive ingredient. Bloody hell, man. Look at this bitch's face. Oh my god. What the Did I hit her in the face? Or is that just her normal face? Jesus. She looks ugly as fuck. Okay, so... This is the boss chest I was banging on about earlier. And obviously... Oh, still, still glass boots. Have I got some kind of weird model installed or what? What what, what the hell is that? <laughs> That's That should not exist in the game. So, elven braces of eminent smithing. That's pretty sick. Um, and we've got some hide boots of waning shock. There's so many... All of these items are enchanted. That's incredible. Best boss chest ever. So there's also an enchant, an alchemy lab, and now you can explore the rest of this location. And if you guys put enough likes on this video, if you enjoy it enough, I will make a video exploring another location guide on this one, because there are some hidden sort of secrets down these rivers and stuff as well that I want to show you guys. 
Anyway guys, I do hope you enjoyed this rendition of Skyrim Legendary Locations. Please do like the video if you did, that's how I know you want to see more content like it. And of course you can also subscribe to make sure you never miss my weekly Skyrim guides. Thanks again for watching guys, my name is ESO and I will see you loyal subscriber in the next Skyrim video guide. I hope you all have a fantastic day.